Nathan's your good buddy, Uncle Ben, and I just flew back home from Sweetwater headquarters in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and boy, are my arms tired. Not from the flying, though. I did that in a, uh, in a jet plane. My arms are tired from the massive amounts of Gortar playing that I did out there, filming a butt-ton of content for you guys out there with my good buddy, Ryan, a.k.a. Brian Bruce from Riffs. Greards and, and Beer, I think is the name of his channel. He and I were flown out there to film a whole bunch of content for you guys. There's some amazing stuff that we did. And you know, while Ryan was out there, he found himself a very precious souvenir that he just fell in love with, and so did I. So I thought to myself, I also need to bring myself a souvenir from my time at Sweetwater back to my home here in East Tennessee. And uh, this little guy right here inside of this box just happened to follow me back home. This is a very special, magical thing inside of this box, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. <laughs> and here we are, guys, a bag of that delightful sweet water candy. So you guys know that supply lines are extremely short around the world for pretty much every product this year. And the cost of candy has just skyrocketed. If you go to the store and try to buy this stuff, you're gonna go broke. So it's honestly the more economically feasible solution to order yourself a nice guitar, amp, piece of pro audio gear from Sweetwater. That way you get some free candy to go along with it and save yourself a couple of bucks. That moment in Pulp Fiction where they open the suitcase, pretty sure this is what was in it. As my good buddy Jessup says, oh my goodness gracious, oh my goodness gracious, my goodness gracious. Would you guys look at that? Now right there is an Ernie Ball Music Man Luke 3, the newest iteration of the signature model by Steve Lukather, guitar player extraordinaire and lover of very nice things. Look at that sparkle finish. Have mercy. As you can see, we got this beautiful ocean sparkle finish, and in my opinion, nobody does sparkle finishes quite like Ernie Ball. This thing is just so super flaky and iridescent. It looks like the bass boat of a dad that had a little bit of cash on the side, if you know what I mean. Beautiful. We got ourselves two hamburger pickups here. These are custom made by Ernie Ball to Steve Luther's specifications. It's also got this cool little like block here on the back, which I didn't understand until I watched Steve demo it, and he kind of uses that to kind of like mash on it. You're just mashing it. You get some cool tremolo pullback effect rather than using the bar. Pretty cool stuff. The volume pot has a push push 12 dB boost. Five way switch. Uh, got a really dark rosewood fretboard right here. It almost looks like ebony. It's so dark. It's really gorgeous. Uh, these are like medium frets, but they're pretty wide. Really nice feeling fretwork on this guitar. On the back of the neck here, we have a roasted flame maple neck. Now, the interesting thing here is that, as I said, uh, Fluff got the exact same guitar. We're guitar twins now. Uh, and this guitar is supposed to have roasted figured maple like this, but for whatever reason, his actually showed up with roasted bird's eye, which kind of makes it really cool. But this roasted flame neck is super sick. It's also got locking Spurzel tuners here on the back to keep it super in tune. Really beautiful, well-cut nut here on the front side. This thing is built to make some music notes. Well, it's about enough of the setup. Let's plug this thing in and start mashing some ropes. <laughs> Okay, 
so I spent last night doing my usual ritual of setting up a guitar while watching a movie. In this case, Arnie's eternal Christmas classic, Jingle All The Way. And I got this thing playing exactly the way that I want to. Now, from the factory, this thing already played great. Ernie Ball sets up the guitars extremely well at the factory, and then, of course, Sweetwater does their own 55-step inspection process, which guarantees that your guitar is going to play like a dream right out of the box. And uh, I didn't really have to do much to get this how I want it. So I uh, straightened out the neck a little bit. I did lower the bridge here, and also I added in a third spring to the tremolo here in the back. Now the reason that I did that is because these guitars come from the factory with the bridge cocked forward a little bit like that. Uh, it's not uncommon to see vintage Fender style bridges like this that are set forward a little bit. That way you can get a little bit of pullback on the bar or do like Steve does and kind of mash his hand against the bridge for a little bit of pull up. You're just mashing it. I might eventually go back to, you know, setting it up like it was from the factory, but I want to be able to change tunings and use drop D and stuff like that without having to deal with tuning hassle. So I just went ahead and decked the tremolo. Intonation was dead on and uh, this guitar is seriously just a dream to play and it sounds amazing. Let's check it out. Today I've got this guitar plugged straight into the Fractal Audio Axe FX3. So as you can hear, that bridge pickup is really dynamic and touch responsive, which is something that I like. It's actually a ceramic magnet pickup, which surprised me because this tend to be a little bit more just high output and loud, you know, a little less touch sensitive. But however they put this thing together, it really does the trick. Awesome sound and pickup. Guitar's got a five-way pickup selector switch, that way you can get access to a ton of different tones. Uh, positions two and four give you those like split sounds, and they are really convincingly stratty. They sound so good. And the neck pickup here in position five is so thick and chewy.
Yeah, one of my favorite things about the guitar is this 12 dB boost that it has built into the volume pot. And this is attached to it by a push-push kind of mechanism like this right here. So to turn it on, you push it, and to turn it off, you push it again. This is really cool because a lot of guitars that have this kind of setup, they have just like a pull only. So it's like pull to turn it on, push to turn it off. And I always find that like in the heat of battle when you're on stage and you want that boost, you kind of got to change the way you're holding your pick, you know, to grab it and pull it up like that and then change it back and get into your solo or whatever. I love with this how you can just knock it, just beat it with your fist to turn it on and off like that. And this really does make a big difference. It's almost like turning on like a, like a tube screamer or something like that. Only you don't have to eat up space on your pedal board or do any tap dancing. So if you're at the front of the stage, you know, soaking up the spotlight and you don't want to run back to your board to turn on your boost or whatever, it's just right there and you're ready to melt some faces. This is also really handy too whenever you're using the split positions because as most of you guys who have used split humbuckers know, typically there's quite an output drop whenever you go from the full humbucking pickup to the split. This is not that bad about it, but especially with the boost engaged, you can really make up for any lost volume and get those single coil tones that are still super huge and fat. I'm gonna play around here with a couple of licks turning that boost on and off. I'm gonna start off here on the bridge pickup with the boost not on. You can hear it's not changing like the fundamental tone of the guitar, it's just adding output. Now, this is the kind of thing that you can feel, I think even more than you can hear it, you know? So you're not hearing this thing jump up drastically volume wise, you're just hearing a little bit more output, a little bit more sizzle and cut, but under the hands it feels really great. I'm feeling the benefits of that extra compression and output that that boost is adding in. Let's mess around here with position number two on the switch so you can hear how it does with the single coils. I think with the boost off, it sounds like a little bit stringier, and whenever you turn it on, on the split settings like that, it just adds in a little bit more richness and fatness to it. This is especially obvious whenever you roll the volume pot down a little bit, so you get those like kind of slightly broken up tones, and then boost it, you can really hear it and feel a difference then. Let's try that out here in position two on the switch. I'll do that same thing this time on position four. And again, right there, you could really hear how it adds some sustain and compression onto the notes. That way you don't lose them or get them you know, swallowed by your noise gate or whatever. Really handy to have this boost going on whenever you're using those split tones. Let's see what that boost does there with the neck pickup too. Uh, the neck on this is something I want to talk about too. That slight V shape that I mentioned is something that I never thought that I would like on a neck. I remember way back in the day picking up some guitars with sort of V-shaped necks and really hating them because at that point I was still very much in like, you know, classical guitar player, three note per string, shredder only, hand position mode. I didn't realize that whenever you have that kind of neck carve going on, it just builds this perfect shelf for your hand to rest on. It's like it's made just to fit in that little groove of your hand. That way you put that thumb over the top of the neck and you can really shake the hell out of a rope using your wrist and everything like Steve Lukather is known for, of course. This is one of those things that I never thought that I would like, but now that I have it on a guitar, it's so comfy. And I also noticed too that it seems like the nut width 
and just neck width in general is a little slimmer than what I'm used to, which isn't a bad thing for me at all. Uh, it's not like I feel like the strings are like cramped together or anything. It just means that everything is so nice and comfy and within reach. They also did a hell of a job beveling these fret ends and rolling the edge of the fretboard. It just feels like a guitar that's already been played for you know 30 years on stage. It feels nice and broken in and familiar, I think is a good way to put it. Yeah, I really don't have a lot to complain about here. This is a really well-built, extremely versatile, really comfortable guitar. I am sure this is not gonna be my last Ernie Ball music man. I hate for these things to be alone, right? It's the only Ernie Ball in the whole house. It's gonna get lonely. It needs somebody to talk to. I'm thinking it might need that guy over there too. Let me know in the comments if you guys think I should invite this guy's sister over. Thank you guys so much for watching this installment of Meet the Machines. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell down there for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. You guys can also help support my channel over on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Over there you're gonna get access to all kinds of backing tracks, bonus lessons, down level tabs, tons of stuff, even just for one dollar a month. So don't delay, sign up today. And be sure to keep an eye out on Fluff's channel for the arrival of his Sparkle Boy. We're gonna be guitar twins. Although actually not identical guitar twins because he is having Sweetwater make a few little tweaks to his, to his specifications. Really cool story. Be sure to watch his channel for that one and you get the entire scoop on what he did and how they did it. And be sure to let me know what classic Steve Lukather licks you would like to learn on a future installment of Weekend Wang Shop here on my channel. A while back I did a full breakdown of the main guitar solo from Rosanna by Toto, but there's a million other classic Lukather solos that we should talk about, so let me know what you want to learn down there in the comment section below. Thanks as always for watching, I get away from the computer and go play some guitar. Less clicking, more picking.